motherfucker. State your name, gangster. It's your boy Chevy Woods of the motherfucking Taylor Gang. We on Gully TV, bitch. What's going on? How you doing? What brought you to Erie PA today? Um, we had a show. Penn State, I don't even know what the hell the B is. The, the Junker Center, Penn State yeah, Baron? Yeah, Center, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, you know, this is like right up the street. So we drove two hours and we do the show. Shout out to homie Big Sean. And thanks to the school for having your boy. Right. You're pushing a, a single right now, real hot on iTunes. I just seen you rock it live. Right. Let's talk about it. Um, it's 30 deep, you know. Some people move five deep, some people move 10 deep, some people move 20 deep. But for us, you know, we usually be like 30 deep. So we, we came with the concept out in LA. Uh, me and Wiz work together on the song so we can right. make it tight in the way that we want it to be and you know, present it to the people and now it's going across the world. Who is Taylor Gang? Um, Active roster. Me, Shelly Woods, Ty Dollarson, uh, Cordy Noel, which is a singer on our label, uh, Wiz, of course, uh, J.R. Denara, uh, Tukey Carter, right. Burner, Juicy. Okay. Yeah. How's the moving, who, movement treating you? It's an organic movement out of Pittsburgh. Ha, ha. Tell me about the progress from day one to now. Um, I just think everything that we're doing now, we had conversations about. Like we talked about this shit when we were first like starting to record at Abbey Lab. So like everything that we conversated about is like coming to light now. So now it was it made it, it makes it easier on us because we talked about it already. And now that we have it, you know what I'm saying? We're just doing everything that we talked about and. To me, just Taylor Gang is just everything, you know what I'm saying? That's where we, we started the real movement after the world to see. And uh, it was all of us, not all of us that are here now with us, but it was all of us, a core group, and we kept that same, let's stick to the family core type of thing, you know, no extra. So the people that we brought in, you know, they're the same type of people that we are. So it was easy for them to mess with us. What can we expect from Chevy Woods in 2014? I'm working on an EP. Um, Coming up with names for that, it's like not to cut you off. Could you tell the listeners the difference between an LP and an EP? An uh, EP is people. I take it. I say it as people drop LPs like later in the year. Okay, you know what I mean. For me, EP is just a like an early project before your album. Great. You know and a lot of people like drop LPs after their album. You know what I mean? And they put what people think are the best stuff from their album, and they might be slam a little bit of new music in there. So it's either early project or late project, just before or after the album. Right. Yeah. I hear you a fan of the URL. Oh man, Emma. who your top three? Ooh. They all watching. They big Gully Ooh. TV fans. They gonna all see this tonight. Mm. Top, top three. three. Top three. Um. Hitman Holla. Um, hmm. I mean, damn, that's that three is crazy. How about I throw out some names and, and you elaborate on okay, three cool. names? Yeah, yeah. Cause cool. I got five. Like, okay. Daylight. Oh, I fuck with Daylight. I like Daylight. Uh, I like his charisma. I like his stage presence. I like his bars, and he brings like you know. It, it, it be jokes sometimes, but he's, you know, he keeps a serious face, so you like, this dude is dope. Like, I fuck with Daylight a lot, and um, he was just battling some chick not too long ago. Yeah, Queen of the Rings. Yeah, something. like, and then, you know, he does stuff like that, so it, like, catches people's eyes, and I just like, you know, how charismatic he is about his, his, his craft. Loaded Lux. Loaded Lux is the, is the, uh... Who'd you take out of uh, Loaded and Hollow? Let's clear this up. I took, I, t I mean, after or, or before I even watched Before, after, well, before the battle, after the battle. Who, who was your winner, clear winner? If you could pick one. I say Hollow. Hollow? Yeah, I mean, and that's just being honest. Because, you know, uh, that was the first time I seen somebody really, like, stand up and, and, and be Hit, at Punch once. back. Exactly, you know, usually... He said so much stuff that you can't, you know what I'm saying, punch back. But Hollow was punching back round after round. And he was like ready for the next round after he got done with his first round. Right. And that made me be like, well, damn. And then he started, you know, throwing the shots around. I was like, jeez. He, 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 he got him to me. Okay. I've uh, seen a couple of pictures on Instagram. He was running around with the Smokers Club guys, Uncasa, Shice Bubs. Right. Those all Gully TV people. Break right. down the difference between a sativa and an indica strain. Well, one is here up and one is down. You know what I'm saying? Um, for me, sativas are just like, like I can do anything off of that. You know what I'm saying? I'll use indicas if I want to, like, just say if I had something like 
we got this this strain we call KK. Not nobody smoking it. What is called? It's called KK. It's Khalifa Kush. So that's a Taylor Taylor Gang that's strain. Just Taylor Gang strain. Wow. You have to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to get that. Say the name again. KK. KK. Yeah. So with that, you know, we do that, and it's it's like a it's like a whatever you want to do. You're not gonna get sleepy type of weed. You know okay. But when you do the indicas, it's like more of a granddaddy perp, more of a cherry pie, right? You know, cookies. It's like real heavy, so you know you can't smoke that going to the studio or being in the studio. You know, you're gonna go to sleep after you record a little bit. Right. So I try to stick to the to the, to the uppers. You a basketball fan at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. What you think about the latest developments in the Donald Sterling situation out there, the uh, Los Angeles Clippers? Um, I think the commissioner, like, like what he did was not bold, you know what I'm saying? But it was what, what needed to be done. Because, you know, first of all, he's a new commissioner. And right. S and second of all, whether people like it or not, the NBA is a, you know, African-American driven league. Dominated, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, so for him to make a stand like that, you know, it really says about his says a lot about his character and how he feels about you know handling the league. And I just think that it was incorrect for him, him to be just you know bragging and boasting about that. You know, he's talking about don't celebrate. If anybody used the word "don't celebrate" them on Instagram, like that's immediate you know red flag. It's like why are you even talking like that? And you have you're paying. You know, African American players, no play doubt, and the head coach. So the thing that they did, what the Clippers did, I, you know, I salute them. My homie is, is, is Jamal Crawford. You know what I'm saying? So okay. Like, like I salute them for, for JC. The that's what's up. Standing up, man. They stand up. They stood up for everybody. It wasn't just for, you know, just for them. Because the first night it was them just doing it. Then the next night it was like all the playoff teams were taking off their stuff and you know not having the little protests, right? You know what I'm saying? So I, that's like how the NBA. And the commissioner stood out everything. Okay. That about wraps it up. You've been a great guest, man. Gully Appreciate TV. It, man. This is what we do. It's your boy Chevy Woods. And we backstage after my motherfucking show. It was hot as fuck out there. They turned up. This is Gully TV. And uh, don't be a bitch-ass nigga or a snitch-ass nigga.